we're working with charts a fair bit in this box. Um, charts work very well to represent pictorial knitting. So uh, Fair Isle, Intarsia, that kind of thing. It, it's very good to kind of visually see the contrast pattern that you're making for double knitting. So charts is a, a very good way of doing that. Um, you might have worked charts for um, knitting before, for like I said, fair isle or lace or something like that. So um, the, the kind of the basics of reading a chart don't change, but there are sort of some specifics that go along with uh, reading a double knitting chart. But let's just have a start by doing a very brief overview of reading charts, so sort of charts 101, and then we'll look at um, the extra bits to be aware of with double knitting. OK, so we've got um, charts in this project that deal with working in the round and we've also got charts that deal with working flat. So, for example, the coaster is worked completely flat. Um, the tea cosy has got elements of working in the round and also flat. So that one is kind of a catch all. But when you're working in the round, you will always read your chart from right to left. Every, every round will be read from right to left. When you're working flat, you will be working, uh, you'll be reading the odd numbered rows from right to left. They're usually your right side rows. And you will be leave, reading your even numbers rows from left to right. That's usually the reverse side of the work. OK, so um, in the round, always right to left. When you're working flat, you, you read in both directions, depending on which number row you're looking at. Now, when you're working in the round, um, in this particular case, you will see your tea cosy chart does not have the same number of stitches that you will have on your needles. Um, and that is quite simply, uh, that's very common um, in charts. Sometimes there are very, very small amount of stitches across the bottom, um, but lots and lots of repeats. So all you need to do on that is you just need to repeat that chart um, once more so you, you work through it twice for each round basically because 41 stitches times 2 is 82 and there you go that's the magical number of stitches you've got on your needles so remember to repeat that chart when you're working in the round um, the each square of the chart actually in a normal chart situation would represent uh, a stitch we're now getting into the specifics of double knitting charts because on double knitting charts, each square represents not just the stitch, but its partner. Do you remember we said everything we do in double knitting works with a partner? So every stitch you make, you have to make its partner stitch as well. So when you're looking at that square, just remember you're not just looking at one stitch, you're looking at a stitch and its partner. Okay, now when you're working in the round, um, let's take the example of our tea cosy chart at the at the kind of beginning part. Ignore the grey sections for now because that is um, that's not double knitting. That's when um, you're working with your yarns held together. I'm looking specifically at the orange and green sections on this chart here. So when you're working in the round, as I've said, you're always working from right to left. When you see that orange square or those orange squares, every single one of those orange squares, what you're going to do is knit your stitch with orange or zinnia and purl its partner with avocado. And you will see that the design on this is the polka dots and they are just made in a contrast colour. So in this, you know, they're made here with avocado. So when you get to one of those dots, what you're going to do is switch it and instead of knitting with zinnia, you're going to knit with avocado. But the equal and opposite reaction is you're going to have to purl its partner with zinnia because what you will then be doing is on the reverse side of your work, you will be creating a background of avocado with dots of zinnia. OK, so it creates um, the identical design, but with the colours reversed on the back, which is lovely because it means anything you make, you've kind of got two versions of. You just um, turn it over or turn it inside out, depending on, on what it is you've made. OK, so that um, explains what the squares mean. What happens when you're working backwards and forwards? Because obviously that chart looks like one chart in one set of colours. So if we look, for example, at the circular coaster here, um, that's one chart in one set of colours. So the background of the circle coaster that I'm looking at is orange and the circle itself is made in green, so zinnia and avocado. 
So that's great, but when I finished working my, my um, first um, zinnia row, um, and I turn it over, it's not zinnia on the other side, it's avocado, because what's happened, all those pearl partners that you've been making in avocado have formed um, the, the same pattern on the other side, but uh, in the reverse color. So what that means is when you are working back on the reverse side, you've basically got to think about those squares in the reverse colors. And I know it is tricky, but we have put it as clearly as I can in the, in the key. So for example, when I'm working back along on row, um, let's pick a row with a, um, with, with some contrast in. So if I, if I'm working row, um, eight, for example, I'm going to be working my stitches that are shown on my chart. Don't forget, I'm reading from left to right. I'm going to be working my zinnia stitches, uh, the orange stitches. What have I got there? Hang on, one, two, three, four, five, I think. Five zinnia stitches to begin with. I'm actually not going to be knitting with zinnia. I'm going to be knitting with avocado and purling with zinnia. Okay, so that is the tricky part of it. The fact that you're going to have to reverse your thinking when you're working the reverse side when you're working flat but i'll be honest with you um you might slip up once or twice but it that's perfectly fine but what you will find is that the work that you've done will help guide you so you're going to know when you turn that coaster over you are instantly going to know that you're not knitting with um, zinnia because all your knit st stitches that are gazing up at you beautifully are made in avocado so you will find it very easy to to um, kind of follow that so hopefully um, <clears throat> it won't be too complicated do take advantage of the notes that we've written on the um, uh, keys to the charts and have a good read in the pattern booklet because we do have a little explanation in there as well so chart 101 you should be ready to get going.